What's going on guys and welcome back to Footy with an Edge. Chelsea have just beaten Man United 4-3 in what seems like the robbery of the century. And I don't mean to be laughing about that game because it obviously hurts as a United fan. But I feel like if you don't laugh you're going to cry. The ref decides to add 8 minutes at the end of that game when there was only one goal scored and three total substitution breaks in that second half. I could be wrong, but I don't really remember seeing any major breaks for injuries in the second half. So where exactly is eight minutes coming from? And then the ref decides to give a soft penalty on Madueke, which VAR doesn't seem to overturn, even though they spent three bloody minutes looking at it, which by the way, is probably an indication that it wasn't a penalty or at least give the ref the ability to make a decision, the on-field ref. And then... <laughs> United inevitably, like they've done the whole season, tend to switch off at the last second corner that we give away, and it's a deflected goal off of Scott McTominay. Seriously, I, I feel like I want to rip my hair out and never watch another minute of Premier League football, because that just hurts. And look, I know I probably have a decent amount of Chelsea fans watching this video because I've been making Chelsea content for the last year or so. I want you guys to get in the comments below. Do you think you actually did enough to come away with a win in that game? Do you think you actually created enough in terms of clear-cut chances to win? Because in my opinion, both penalties were relatively soft. If the ref doesn't give them on the pitch, I don't think VAR looks at both of those and says, hey, go look at the monitor and I think you should give those. VAR, we know, are a bunch of spineless prats. They're just going to do whatever the ref awards on the pitch. And then the winning goal was a deflection from the last kick of the game. The only goal you guys scored from open play um, actually came in the fourth minute, which seems like forever ago. So I know you guys must be delighted as a Chelsea fan with that win because on some days, that's just football. That's how this game works. That's why we actually love the game because of the unpredictability. Your team can be second best for 90 minutes and then steal a win at the end. So I don't want to take away from your happiness in the moment, but let's call a spade a spade and recognize that Chelsea stole that game away from Man United. So let's all agree that VAR and the refs have been dropping the ball this season because there were tons of wrong decisions given by the ref in that game and I don't know if it was the home crowd or what else that got to him but I'm obviously very frustrated as a United fan um, and I won't be upset at you guys for you know making fun of me or other United fans as Chelsea fans yourself because it's fine you know it's a game this happens but it's frustrating when it happens in that way so anyways <laughs> we have a lot of things to talk about from that game so let's get straight into the analysis all right so I want to start off by talking about some of the familiar issues that I actually see between United and Chelsea for where we're at in terms of the stage of progression for both managers and for both clubs. The game started with United holding control of the ball and Chelsea willing to really defend deep, soak up the pressure and counterattack. When a team does this, especially at home, it's a sign that they're not as comfortable with their style of play in possession. Because... It is much harder to break down a team when the onus is on you to keep the ball and play at the edge of the opposition's box. So to play at the edge of United's box with the ball is a lot harder to do because you need to have your patterns of play and you need to move the ball in such a way that within the first or second phase of play, you get a shot off on goal and that's a relatively high goal scoring chance. Chelsea at this moment with your players being very young and still developing and meshing together as a squad, don't have that identity or that intricate decision making in the final third to do this on a consistent basis, whether it's at home or away. But especially at home, when you expect a team like Chelsea to keep hold of the ball and play at the edge of the opposition's box, you don't have that maturity yet. Which means when you have higher possession and you're trying to create chances from open play, you'll normally find that your front four will push up to the edge of the opposition's box and you'll have the midfield and the defense also push up with them, right? So the midfielders will probably hold somewhere here. The defenders are pushed up with the, the wingbacks playing up high. And this is kind of your attacking shape. In this situation, when you're trying to create that decisive chance to break down the opposition defense, you may find that you don't have that 
final pass to find the runner in behind. So let's say Jackson's making this diagonal run, Palmer tries the pass, maybe it's intercepted. Or you don't have someone beating the right man at the right time to draw players out of position so that there's space in behind for the likes of Mudrick and Gallagher to make these runs. So when you don't have these things working for you in the first try, which is expected because you know your team it hasn't quite gelled to that level yet it means one of two things either you will lose the ball in this first attempt that you make or you'll make the wrong pass at the wrong time and still end up keeping the ball but your attack and your team is now out of shape so in this second scenario you might have a situation where Jackson and Mudrick have made these runs, but they retreat back to get into an onside position. And actually, one of Fernandez or Caicedo have made the run from midfield to get into the uh, final third. So you have, let's say, Caicedo and Fernandez both out of position, and maybe Gallagher, Mudrick, and Kukurea are a little bit deeper because they're trying to make those passes in. Now, in this second scenario, where your team is out of shape you, and your midfielders have swapped positions with your forwards in an attempt to create the previous chance, your lack of cohesion or lack of style of play really stands out. Because in this situation, if you end up making the wrong pass at the wrong time, your midfield is actually completely vacant. And the opposition now has a chance, if they win the ball back, to run straight through the heart of your midfield and get straight at your back four and create a really high quality chance. And this is exactly what happened in both halves today. Both teams were playing a basketball match because the midfield was completely vacant. So my point here is not that Chelsea don't have a style of play or Potch sucks or Chelsea players suck. My point is that both teams have very similar problems. We both can't quite capitalize on our first or second attacks when we have the ball. So when we tried that third attack, when we still keep possession we all of a sudden find ourselves in a terrible defensive shape. And that leads to the other team having tons of shots against us, having very high XG against us. And that's why both teams have conceded a lot of goals this season. So for Chelsea, you have too many new players trying to play together in the same team in within the same season. You have too many changes that have happened in the club structure behind the scenes with the new ownership and everything. And there's just not been enough patience from the fans or the media or anyone else to actually let things improve. And almost the exact same thing is happening with United right now. We have problems creating chances from open play. We have injury issues that are causing us to have three separate center back or four separate center back partnerships from the start to the end of one game. We started with Varane and Maguire, then we changed to Varane and Evans, and then we changed to Varane and Kamwala. And I don't even know what it was at the end of the game. So there's a lot that is wrong with both clubs. We're both struggling to find our feet and we're both in transition seasons. And it is no surprise that we're both playing a very similar brand of football. In the first game that we played this year, it was a 3-1 win to United and Chelsea absolutely got battered at Old Trafford. But we still gave up like so many chances to Chelsea that they could have easily scored, won that game 4-3 as well. And in this game, United arguably played the better football and deserved to win, whatever that means. But Chelsea ended up getting the win. So it's neither here nor there. I don't think there's a lot you can take away from this game and say, oh, sack Ten Hag or sack uh, Pochettino or, or you know, give, give Pochettino a lifetime contract or whatever, however you want to go with this. My point is both teams are clearly struggling to create chances from open play, to play a good brand of football, and they're just hanging on to moments like this where it was elation for Chelsea and destruction for United today, and it might be something different on another day. So, United fans, if you think we didn't deserve to lose this game, tell me this. Do you think we deserve to be in 6th place right now? Because we've played bad enough, in my opinion, to be around 10th place where Chelsea is. In fact, Chelsea's position in the table is probably a more fair reflection of their performances this season, whereas United are kind of getting away with where we are right now. So, <laughs> considering all of the craziness we've just seen and what I've just shown you here, are you really that upset that we've lost the game? I know it hurts, but are you really that upset? Because... These are two clubs that are very similar in terms of where they're supposed to be right now. And I think, you know, 6th place versus 10th place is kind of a false position for us as United fans.
Let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, now we got to talk about the positives from both teams. Anthony was on something today. This guy has been the butt of every single joke that has come towards Man, Man United this season. He's gone through off the field stuff as well, but that performance today was very inspired. In the 64th minute, the way he sprinted down the length of the pitch to beat Kukurea and then go outside of him to get to the byline and put in a cross across the six yard box, that was just insane. I've never seen, seen that level of passion aggression and pace to be honest from Anthony before and if Hoyland instead of going short went across the box that was a goal and then he makes that outside of the boot pass to Garnacho for our third goal and Garnacho's second goal that was absolutely legendary like that was that was out of nowhere where did that come from to play a pass like that that that's literally something out of FIFA like a Travella pass it was just crazy, man. What was I watching? This guy put in a great performance today, and I would have given him the man of the match had Garnacho not scored his two goals. I feel like there's a real chance for Anthony to make his way back into our team. His work rates were awesome. He was going up and down the pitch, doing a lot of work defensively as well. But he's been struggling with creativity. He got his first assist today, and I'm really happy for him. If he can keep this up, I think he's hands down our best right winger. And Rashford might actually struggle to get into this team based on how well Garnacho and Anthony um, are playing right now. Next, we got to talk about our main man, Alejandro Garnacho. This kid impresses me over and over and over again. He is relentless, man. He, I think he's made 28 consecutive starts for United now in all competitions. His maturity just seems to grow leaps and bounds game in, game out. Where where he was getting let's say eight out of the ten decisions right in the final third now he seems to be getting all ten of the decisions right more often than not you give him the ball he's going to try to put in a cross or shoot when it's the right time just a few months ago we complained about him taking too many shots and being too selfish but now that has improved a ton he constantly looks for the pass when it's the right time to pass and he goes for the shot when it's the right time to shoot like he had four shots today and he scored two goals from it. So massive credit goes to this guy. And seriously, our, our future on the wing is in great, great hands. Now we go on to Chelsea. Cole Palmer or Cold Palmer, as you want to call him. Oh my word, what a player. 46 million pounds spent by Chelsea on transfer deadline day or, or somewhere near there to bring this guy in from Man City. This kid is driving more value than Moises Caicedo, Enzo Fernandez, Mikhailo Mudrik, and Mark Kukurea. And Chelsea spent 371 million pounds on those four players. I can't remember the last time one player did this much for one club in any given season. If you guys watch basketball at all, there's a stat called value over replacement, and generally the best players on the best teams have the highest value over replacement because the team tends to fall off a cliff whenever they're on the bench or they don't play. Cole Palmer's value over replacement, if I was to bring this stat across over to football, seems to be as good as Michael Jordan's was for the Bulls or LeBron James for any team that he's played on. And that's really saying something because it's not like Chelsea doesn't have options on the wing to replace Palmer. You have Mudrik, you have Madueke, Sterling, and Nkunku, but this kid at 21 years old is keeping Sterling, who's a 29-year-old veteran, on the bench because he is that bloody good. You, He's literally carrying the team, and the fact that a last-minute 46 million pound transfer is carrying your team is an indication of how bad Chelsea's recruitment has been over the last two seasons. My word, someone should actually fire Todd Bowley as the owner because the 21-year-old kid is single-handedly keeping your club out of the relegation battle. That's all I can say here. Chelsea fans, let me know how much you guys like this kid because to score a hat-trick today, okay, was a jammy goal and two jammy penalties. That's me as a United fan crying about it. But he was there and he got it done. He had nine shots, as you can see here. And, and just an incredible game. What an incredible player. I'm, I'm really happy for you, Chelsea fans. My fellow United fans, we need to talk. How are you feeling over there? 
Are you ready to hit that Ten Hag out button yet? Be honest. Seriously, just be honest. I feel like some of us might be getting closer to hitting Ten Hag out, right? We feel like every week we're getting worse in terms of the performances. We feel like we're losing games we should be winning. And then we're also losing games because we didn't turn up. So the natural question becomes, who else to blame for this shit show than Ten Hag? And I'm with you through all of this. Seriously, I'm with you. I can see the logic. But ask yourself this. What is he actually supposed to do? United's injury list is equivalent to an army that is fighting an active war. Our best player from last season has fallen off a cliff in Marcus Rashford, without any warning, by the way. We seem to be getting terrible VAR and refereeing decisions that are going against us and costing us games. And to top it all off, we've had new ownership coming in halfway through the season that are apparently shaking up everything from a footballing perspective. How is one person supposed to clean up all the shit that is accumulated over the last 10 years? Let me give you guys an example that might make more sense. Let's say you're in charge of taking out the trash in your home or apartment every day. And let's say for some reason your garbage chute is jammed or the city's garbage collection has stopped coming around for weeks. So you've decided as the owner of your home, instead of doing something about the garbage chute or calling the city department about collection to just let the trash accumulate in your garbage can to the point where 10 years have passed and there's nothing but a pile of stinking trash in your entire house. And you finally realize 10 years later, oh, I might need to hire a cleaning lady to not only come and cleaning the trash, but improve the condition of my home so that it remains clean forever. <laughs> and guess what? That cleaning lady is expected to do all of the cleaning by herself, and if she doesn't, she's getting sacked. What is Ten Hag supposed to do at this club? We have so much shit that is revolving around the players, around the club, around the media and fans of other clubs wanting us to suffer and make the bad decisions. There's just so much happening. I think I heard uh, from The Athletic, one of the one of the great writers from The Athletic, they were talking about if Ten Hag was on the market right now and we were going through the situation we're going through right now, he would be at the top of our list in terms of a new manager to hire. Have some patience, guys. I know it's very difficult. I know the loss today hurts. I know this season just hurts overall i i seriously won't want to <laughs> i want to pull my hair out and i don't want to watch any more football that's how i feel when we go through a loss like this and then on the other end when we beat a team like liverpool 4-3 to go through to the semifinals of the fa cup you know i feel that same elation again that you should feel for supporting your club my point for all of this and the weird metaphors is that we need to have more patience I know it's difficult, but we need to do the difficult thing. And Chelsea fans will tell you that they probably did the wrong thing by sacking Tuchel and also by sacking, um, what's his face, Graham Potter too soon. Because what, what would have been the harm of just giving him to the end of the season? Because they let him go, they brought Lampard in, people were booing Lampard, now they've brought Pochettino in as the savior, and I'm sure some of you Chelsea fans want to sack Pochettino as well, but what is that going to get you? It's not going to get you anywhere. You have to have patience and invest in the manager that you have appointed. And you have to give them three, maybe even four or five seasons to turn things around. Because being impatient is only going to take you two steps backwards instead of one step forward. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.